Welcome to session four of Watch Your Doctrine. Now, in our last session, Ruined by Sin, we looked at the effects of sin on every part of our lives. Sin has darkened our minds, distorted our affections, and disabled our wills. Today, we're looking at how God reverses the effects of sin in our lives. God intervenes to open our blind eyes so that we grasp and believe the truth. He changes our hard hearts so that we love him freely, and he redirects our stubborn wills so that we serve him gladly. God does this by his Holy Spirit, and the Spirit's great work of intervention is called regeneration. Now, regeneration is a wonderful work of God, and I think you're going to be encouraged as you see how God has regenerated you. How by the power of his spirit, he's able to regenerate others, including some of the people that you are seeking to lead. Now, let's begin with three questions. First, what is the difference between a person who is saved and a person who is not saved? Is it simply that the person who is saved believes certain things that an unsaved person doesn't? And if there's more, then what is the difference? Second question, how are repentance and faith possible for a person who is dead in trespasses and sins? Remember, the Bible says that the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Well, how can repentance and faith come from a deceitful, wicked heart? Third question, what has happened to you in your life that could only be explained by an intervention of God's power. See, the gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Now, what then has happened to you that could only be explained by an intervention of God's power? Well, the answer to all these questions is regeneration. Regeneration is the work of God's Holy Spirit by which he has changed your soul, so that with a new mind, heart and will, you trust him, love him and follow him gladly. Now the Bible speaks about this intervention of God in several different ways. So let's begin by looking at the language of regeneration. Regeneration is a Bible word and it's also a Bible theme. You'll find the word in Titus chapter 3. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Now notice how God saved us. It was by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. And all of this is the gift of God through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Now the other place in the Bible where this word regeneration is used is in Matthew 19, where Jesus says, Truly, I say to you that you who have followed me In the regeneration, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Other translations of this verse say, in the new world, or at the renewal of all things. Jesus is clearly speaking about the new heaven and the new earth. And the word he uses to describe this transformation is the regeneration. Now that tells us a lot about the meaning of this word. Regeneration involves taking something, in this case the planet, that has been devastated by sin and making it new so that it reflects the glory of God. And this is the word that the Bible uses to describe God's work in you. If you're in Christ, then what God will one day do for this planet He has already done in you. Now, the word regeneration occurs just twice in the Bible. 
But regeneration is a major Bible theme. The Bible speaks about regeneration in four ways. New birth, new creation, new life and new heart. Regeneration is a new birth. Jesus said, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Now, to be born again is to receive an infusion of new life that comes from God himself. And Jesus tells us that this new birth is the work of the Holy Spirit. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes, so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God brings us to new birth. But how does the Holy Spirit do this? Well, the Spirit of God regenerates sinners through the Word of God. Peter tells us, You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding Word of God. Now, Peter is using the analogy of how human life begins. The living seed comes, and in a moment a new life is conceived. Of course, the seed does not always bring new life, but there's no new life without the seed. The Holy Spirit brings us to new birth through the living seed of the Word of God. And it follows that if we want people to be born again, the best thing we can do is to open the Bible with them. Get the living seed of the Word of God into people's lives and pray that the Holy Spirit will bring new life from the seed. Then another way in which the Bible describes this miracle of regeneration is the new creation. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. God made you. He knit you together in your mother's womb. But as we saw last time, all of us are affected by sin in every area of our lives. When God regenerated you, he did a new creative work in you, in which he opened your mind, softened your heart, and redirected your will. You're no longer the person you used to be. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Another way that the Bible describes regeneration is that God has brought you to new life. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Now, if you're in Christ, this is what has happened to you. God made you alive. By nature, you were unresponsive to God, but God has regenerated you by breathing new life into your soul. And then the scripture speaks about God giving the gift of a new heart. God says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Now, we saw last time that the heart you were born with loved all the wrong things. By nature, we were lovers of self rather than lovers of God. But God has given you a new heart, and that is why you love him and trust him and want to serve him. So, new birth, new creation, new life, new heart. Although the word regeneration is only found twice in the scripture, the truth of regeneration is all over the Bible. This is a really important Bible doctrine, and grasping it will be of great help to you and to the people you lead. The second thing I want you to see today is that regeneration is God's work. God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Regeneration is God's work. But now, how does God's work of regeneration relate to our work, which is to repent and to believe the gospel? 
Well, listen to what John says about what God does and about what we do. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now let's pause there for a moment. Notice the clear statements of what we must do. We must receive Jesus. And we do this by believing in his name. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. But John's not done. He goes on to say that we who receive Jesus by believing in his name are children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. God regenerates us, and we receive Jesus by believing in his name. God breathes new life into us, and we begin a new life of trusting and loving and serving Jesus. And these things go together. You never have the one without the other. Everyone who believes has been regenerated, and everyone who has been regenerated believes. Now, which of these goes first? Well, Christians have debated that over many centuries. But it seems clear to me that if we take what we learned about how we are ruined by sin seriously, it follows that the way in which we are saved is that God opens our blind eyes so that we grasp the truth and believe in him. God changes our hard hearts so that we come to love him. And God bends our stubborn wills so that we come to serve him. Behind our believing lies the miracle of God's regenerating grace. There's an old illustration that I found helpful here. Think about a sunrise. When the sun comes up in the morning, there's light. These two things happen together, never the one without the other. And if you watch a sunrise, you might say, it's light because the sun has risen. You would never say the sun has risen because it's light. No, light comes when the sun rises, not the other way around. Well, regeneration is like the sun rising and faith is like the light that it brings. Behind our believing lies the miracle of God's regenerating grace. So we've seen that regeneration is a Bible word and theme, that regeneration is God's work. And I want us to see thirdly that regeneration has changed you. We saw in our last session that sin has defaced every part of our being. Our minds darkened, our affections distorted, our wills disabled. And regeneration is God's work in which he has changed your soul. So that with a new mind, heart and will, you trust him, you love him and you follow him gladly. When God regenerated you, he opened your mind. So that what Paul states is true of you. God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God's done that. He has shined his light into your heart. Then when God regenerated you, he changed your heart. So that what Peter said of the first believers is true of you. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. And when God regenerated you, he redirected your will so that what Paul says to the Corinthians is true of you. We make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. What changed in regeneration? You did. God intervened in your life. He made you a new creation in Jesus Christ. You are no longer the person you used to be. Now, it's important to say a word about what does not change in regeneration. Regeneration doesn't change your temperament. God created you. 
He made you with your own unique gifts and personality and temperament, and the new birth does not violate what God has made. So shy sinners become shy Christians. Creative sinners become creative Christians. Strong-willed sinners become strong-willed Christians. And you see that, for example, in Saul of Tarsus. He was a passionate, articulate, driving, relentless leader before he came to Jesus Christ. And when God regenerated him, he redirected what had been used in the service of evil and used it for the advance of the gospel around the world. God never makes two snowflakes the same. And he certainly never makes two Christians the same. When God regenerated you, he moved you in a new direction. You are made new, but you're still you. So don't lose your joy in following Jesus by trying to be someone else. God didn't make us unique in creation just to make us all the same in redemption. His purpose is to create a unique reflection of Jesus Christ in you. Now, the last thing that I want us to see in this session is that regeneration is a completed event. Let's take a moment to put this wonderful truth of regeneration into context. I found it helpful to think of our salvation in three stages. Christ's completed work, Christ's continuing work, and Christ's coming work. I also find it helpful to make a distinction between what Jesus has done for us and what Jesus has done in us. Now, putting these together, we can say that redemption is Christ's completed work for us. We'll look at this next time. Christ redeemed us by the shedding of his blood. Regeneration is Christ's completed work in us. And this is how regeneration is distinct from sanctification, which is Christ's continuing work in us. Think about the difference between birth and growth. Birth is a completed event. We have been born again. Growth is a continuing process. We are growing up in the Lord. Now, to fill out this chart, the continuing work of Jesus for us is his intercession. Right now, he is at the right hand of the Father. Our Saviour is where we need him to be, and we can be sure that we will have all that we need for all that we face because Jesus speaks to the Father on our behalf. And when Jesus comes again in power and glory, his great work for us will be resurrection. We will receive new bodies, like his resurrection body, adapted for eternal life. And Christ's great work in us will be glorification, in which he will remove every trace of sin's presence from every part of our being. You will never sin, and you will never even be inclined to sin. When you see Jesus, you will be like him. So again, regeneration like birth is a completed event. Sanctification is the growth of the life that began in regeneration. Now, most Christians are more familiar with the continuing process of sanctification than the completed event of regeneration. And it's natural for us as believers to say, God is changing me. Though we might hesitate to say, God has changed me, because we know that we still have a lot more changing to do. But the doctrine of regeneration reminds us that God has changed us. God has opened your eyes. God has changed your heart. God's spirit dwells in you. You are no longer the person you once were. So let me end by encouraging you with some scriptures that speak of Christ's completed work in you. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. He doesn't say if anyone is in Christ, he's becoming a new creation. 
He doesn't say the old is going away and the new is gradually forming. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. He's not describing a process. He's describing something that has happened to all who are in Christ. Or think about this in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This is what has happened. It's a done deal. This is the truth about you as a believer. Christ lives in you. Or Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Now again, this is what has happened to you. If you're a believer, you have been raised with Christ. The resurrection life of Jesus is in you. Or 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? Again, notice he does not say your body is becoming a temple of the Holy Spirit. He says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you're in Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And it's his presence in you that makes the Christian life possible. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. At one time, you were darkness. But now, you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Notice, you were darkness, now you are light. Your nature has changed. And notice how Paul brings regeneration and sanctification together here. You are light, that's regeneration. So live as light, that's sanctification. Or think about Romans chapter 6 and verse 22. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God. Well, we all sin and fail in many ways, but Paul says you have been set free from sin. You're no longer sin's prisoner. Yes, sin is still your enemy, but it's no longer your master. Christ has set you free, and now you're in a position to put up a fight. Then 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 that we looked at earlier, you have been born again. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. The language of birth is clearly the language of a completed event. Regeneration like birth is Christ's completed work in you. And sanctification like growth is Christ's continuing work in you. We began this session with three questions to which regeneration is the answer. First we asked... What is the difference between a person who is saved and a person who is not saved? And the answer is regeneration. A person who believes has been regenerated by the Holy Spirit of God. You were blind and God opened your eyes. You were bound and God set you free. You were dead and God raised you up. That is an amazing miracle of grace. And however simple the story of your journey to faith, this is what God has done in you. And then we asked, how are repentance and faith possible for a person who is dead in trespasses and sins? And again, the answer is regeneration. You've been given a new heart, a new birth, a new life. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. And we asked, what has happened in your life that could only be explained by an intervention of God's power? And the answer is regeneration. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you love him and have a desire to serve him, you can be confident that God has saved you by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. So be encouraged. God has intervened in your life. You may have many battles, but you're not who you were before. You're a new creation in Jesus Christ.